Have you ever wanted to set up a web server without a ton of configuration? Do you want a web server that will generate and keep your SSL certs updated? Stay tuned and see what Caddy can do for you. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when you get when we get started on installing Caddy is you need to actually log into your your the server that you're going to install Caddy on. Um, I've been using the same server for a few different tutorials. It's the same server I used in the the SSH keys video and the uh, Ubuntu installation. Um, but you can use if you whatever server you want. Now the installation itself is very simple, um, and they have it on their website. If you go to caddyserver.com, you can find the instructions there. But we'll just go through it. It's five commands to get it installed, and that's it. So the first command, and I'm just gonna copy and paste because there's quite a bit to it here, is gonna be sudo apt install dash y. So what that command is, is we're running as root, we're using app to install, and we're saying yes to go ahead and install it without confirmation. We're installing Debian keyring, Debian archive keyring, and apt transport HTTPS. So go ahead and hit enter. It's gonna, since we're running that command as root, it's gonna ask for your password. And then just go through the install procedures. This should be pretty quick, but once it's installed, you'll get back to your normal command prompt window or your normal com command prompt command line. And now the installation is complete. So the next thing that you need to do is you actually need to download, what we're doing is we're gonna read from Caddy's website to copy a key into our our apt folder. So our, 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 trust, our apt trusted keys folder basically. Um, so we're gonna copy this command and I will make sure I put these on the screen. Um, but we're going to curl or see URL. And we're going to read this URL, which is going to be a key. And we're going to write it out to a file called caddy-stable.asc. And that's an Etsy apt trusted GPG D folder. So once you get that, or once you get that in there, you're going to press enter. It's going to read the key, and if you actually catted, so if you cat, um, ECC apps trusted, GPDD, caddy, stable, ASC, it's the same thing as what was outputted up before. So let's go ahead and clear the screen just to make it a little easier to read. And now we're going to do something similar. So we're going to, um, we're going to, curl um, a file from Debian or from um, another file and this is going to be your app sources list um, so this this tells apt where to reach out to to grab caddy from so let's go ahead and hit enter it's gonna write that file and again if you do cat Etsy app sources dot list dot d slash caddy stable dot list it's the same thing so let's go ahead and clear that now we're just going to do a sudo apt update so this updates your repositories on this server this is usually a fairly quick process 
but it does take a little longer since we just added those two repositories, um, which you can see here. And then we're going to do sudo apt install caddy. So this is the actual install of caddy. And since you, since you are only doing one and it doesn't have any dependencies, it's just going to go ahead and download and install it. So now the, the application's installed and that's really all there is to the installation. So next we're going to actually just create a dummy website and be able to um, view it from from within or from our computer. So you might be asking yourself, how do I, how can I verify that it, it worked? Well, after you ran the install, all you need to do is go to your server's IP address and you'll get a page like this. This means that Caddy was installed successfully. And then I'll, I'll walk you through the actual config file for Caddy, which is pretty simple. So we'll do sudo because we need to do this as root again, nano Etsy caddy and then caddy file with a capital C and a capital F. And then we'll need to put our password in. We'll need to type our password in correctly. And this is a basic normal port 80 caddy file. So by default, caddy uses a port 443 and all everything on port 80 is forwarded to port port 443. So for the next example, I'm going to go to a, a, a production instance so that I can give you a more in-depth view of how to, how to use caddy with SSL certificates and with um, the ability, you know, to public re publicly resolve a, a DNS name. So let's go ahead and move over to a live instance. Okay, so now we've logged into our production instance and this is this is a, a web server that hosts um, our, our forms for uh, for IT Bible. And I've pointed the, the domain tutorial.itbible.net to the server. So let's go ahead and create um, a, a caddy file for that domain. So let's go to sorry, sudo nano So we're going to go edit our caddy file. If we can spell correctly, we're going to go edit our caddy file. Now this is our caddy file for everything to do with IT Bible. Um, so there will probably be a lot of blurred out stuff. So let's, so we're going to add a section called tutorial. And I want this to, well, first let's ping. So I can ping it or tutorial.itbible.net, which is our, our domain name. And now I want to create a record for it. So let's go ahead and do um, tutorial.itbible.net. And now we've created our, in, in Apache terms, this would be a vhost. Um, I can't remember what it is in Nginx, but so all I want to do for this one is I'm going to share out the same caddy temp page. Um, so we'll go root for all folders is going to be user share caddy. And then we want this to be a file server. So file server, we're going to control X. Y, enter, and then we're going to go ahead and sudo 
sudo system control reload caddy. So now if we go to uh, itbible.net, we have a we have a HTTPS website served. And if you go, so if we for, try to force our browser to do HTTP, it it actually redirects us all with that one line of, or with this, what, three lines, four lines. And on top of that, it actually keeps your, your SSL certificates up to date. So this uses Let's Encrypt certificates by default. There are ways to do other certificates, but obviously it can't renew those. So, um, for the let's encrypt certificates it works great and keeps them up to date and if you go and look at let's look at our certificate so issued by r3 which is let's encrypt details r3 let's encrypt us yep i mean it looks looks good to me now there so if you wanted to force so say i want to force a um force tutorial.itbible.net to be on port 80 so i do colon port 80 do a, a lot of the sim uh, it'd be similar now so if we do https again So now if we do HTTPS or HTTP, so my browser has it cached, so it's not going to let me do it. So let's do, there you go. So if you do eight, yeah, if you put colon 80 at the end, it will do it that way. Now, if you need to make a, a non-standard port HTTPS, you can do that also, but I think that's kind of out of the scope of this video. Um, just like reverse proxies. Um, reverse proxies are super simple. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to reverse proxy tutorial.itbible.net to Let's see, what would I want to reverse proxy? Let's just say uh, reverse underscore proxy HTTP localhost 8099. So if I wanted to do that, if I wanted tutorial.itbible.net on port 443 to reverse proxy over to localhost 8099 that's how i would do that um if you want to redirect so if you want to redirect to a different website so you can do reader https um discord dot gg slash your share code so, so let's just say your share codes a bunch of x's permanent so then now if you were to go to tutorial.itbible.net similar to how on our website if you go to discord.itbible.net this would redirect you to discord and you'd be able to log in with discord like normal so it's pretty flexible there are a lot more options than what i've shown you um so i mean it, it's just super simple there's an api so you can actually have your your websites create specific um specific uh, kind of v hosts or domains or anything like that and that way it could all be dynamic and be loaded from your backend website so you just have one entry to direct that to there and then or you know however you want to do it so i hope this was helpful and i hope you learned something 
And that's all there is to it. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. And go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified on when we post our next video.